the star in front of you here is absolutely impossible and should not exist. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the second video in my The Science of Elite series. And this video was actually supposed to be a video where I would go out and I would look at some of the big red hyper giants and I would talk about the end of the life cycle of a star and what happened depending on the size of the star, whether the ghost supernova or just fizzes out to a cloud. But it turns out that this is going to be something completely different because as part of that I went out to visit a star called Wee uh, Canis Majoris. This is the largest known star and I thought that would make for some, uh, for some good video for video when I talk about large stars, right? As part of it, I had a look at the stat sheet and, and then something that puzzled me. I don't know if you can spot it here, you probably won't, but first we looked at the star and, and it, it looks, well, 17 uh, solar masses, that's, that's okay. Um, well over a, a thousand solar radius, well, it's a big star, but again, largest known star, you would expect so. That kind of fits as well, but then we then I got and I looked at the age and and here it says it's 850 million years and that just did not fit. I just couldn't make that age um, fit with where and how I would expect this star to have evolved. It was way too old. A star this size at this part of its life, I would expect that to be let's say 10 million years old and to be at the end of its life cycle and expecting that star to die pretty soon. So seeing this star being 850 million years really puzzled me. And I, at first I was really, really, I thought, okay, did I completely forget? Did I mix up my um, HR diagram? So I'll come back to those in a bit. So I went back and I found all my old university books and I looked at, at the formation of stars, which I had here. I had my, I found old lecture notes on, uh, on stellar structure and evolution to, to try and figure out what the hell was going on. And no matter what I did, no matter how many equations I looked up and how many times I tried to plug numbers in, I always ended up with this star just being impossibly old. So I thought, what what the hell is, is, is going on? And this was where this kind of whole project here got completely sidetracked. So I began looking around and and one well, of the first thing I did was I went in and I looked up what's called a HR diagram. Um, and you can see one here. It's basically what you have here is a, a diagram that shows how stars evolve um, and the relation between the luminosity and, and the surface temperature. Now we have the luminosity on a logarithmic scale out here on the y-axis. So notice every time we go up one step, we go up by a factor of 10. So it would be one in the middle and then it is 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and then goes up like that, right? On the other axis, we have in reverse order the temperature. And, and a little funny thing, we see this way too often in astrophysics where scales are flipped upside down. And the reason why this was, uh, was flipped was because originally this graph was made with um, the star, the wavelength of the star, but that was then later translated over to temperature um, and because those are uh, inverse related, you end up having a scale where you have 30,000 um, Kelvin at the lowest end, and then it goes down to um, uh, 3,000 at the at the higher end of the scale. So uh, yeah, a little bit confusing. And a small funny thing here, there's a lot of, whenever I talk about star classes and classifications, people always go, oh, you can just have that uh, KGB form, whatever that is people use. Nope, it's not right, you use Oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. That's the right order. That is already ordered by um, st uh, star temperature or star color. Um, so th at least that's how I've been taught. That is the way you remember it, because then you have already have it ordered in the right order. Anyway, so this diagram shows you a lot of things. It shows you where stars are dependent on um, on their mass and where they are in the life cycle. Now we have this line going through the main, uh, like across the whole graph here. That's called um, the main phase. This is the, as the name suggests, the part of the where the star lives most of its life. We can also see these faint gray lines going across. That is the stellar radius. That's how big it is. So if we take here one solar radius, we could follow that in 
and look right there we have the sun right in the middle and we can also see we have the sun sitting here we have on the green uh, texture we can see the sun is expected to be 10 to the power of 10 years that's 10 billion years is this expected lifetime of this of a star like the sun and we can see here as we go down to smaller stars we get a, a higher life expectancy and as we go up to bigger stars the life expectancy of the star goes down now we can also see these branches that goes out we're going to ignore the white dwarfs for now but we're going to see these branches that goes out those are called the um the red giant phase or the the red giant branch because that's what happens when the star goes into the final phases of its life. We can see that it moves up, so it, it swells up because we can see that that a star like the sun would move up and um, and begin to to swell up and become larger. We can also see that in uh, in most cases they would also become cooler. That makes sense. You you expand it, so the the surface uh, becomes colder. Um, and they actually increase in luminosity in case for at least for smaller stars but we can also see for bigger stars up here um who are often very short-lived we can see that they often expand a lot more um and also become a lot colder than they were originally of course because they expand a lot more and we can see we have beetlejuice out here so if we take the information about um the star that we looked at earlier and we plug that into uh, to the graph so we know the star is several thousand solar uh, radius, which puts it um, uh, in this area up here, in this general vicinity up here. And, and this is where we would expect it to be um, because, well, it's, it's a hypergiant. It's a very big star. So from that, we can then, and now that we know that it's on its giant branch, we can then backtrace it and we can see that it kind of ends up in here in this vicinity here and we can see here again that fits with the mass we can see the masses are also uh, shown here on the um on the graph here we can see that okay so the mass if we go in it should be somewhere around uh, it's not quite in the middle here but it, it's around the 15 to 17 solar masses that kind of fits what we're seeing again it's, it's 17 solar masses so the size of the star makes sense, the radius of the, of the star, that also makes sense. But look at the life expectancy of the star. It's 10 to the power of 7 uh, years, which is about 10 million years. So as I said uh, earlier in the video, I would kind of expect the star to be around those 10 million years at this point of its life. Um, but again, we're seeing it here being 800 uh, and 50,000, uh, sorry, 850 million years. So if that was where we would expect to see the star being that old, we would have to move down here. And if the star here was in its giant branch, it would then be somewhere out in this vicinity here. So color of the star is okay. But we can see here that now the size of the star is only, or quote unquote only, somewhere around the maybe a hundred solar radius so if that's the case that it is in fact a a smaller star that has just been uh, it, it should have been a lot smaller but then the life expectancy would have fitted so something was definitely up and this star just just did not fit anything that uh, as as far as i could um and i could as could make it fit in the in this uh, diagram so what i did was I, I went in, I began to, to search around because I wanted to know what, they, what was going on. I mean, some of these numbers have to be wrong and I need to figure out which one it was. And then I came across this article published in the Astrophysical Journal in 2012. This is written by a, um, a bunch of guys. I per don't, don't really haven't read much of them before, so don't really recognize the names. But looking from where they're from, we have one from the... Um, the Shanghai uh, Astronomical Observatory, um, part of the Chinese Academic of Science. We have one from Howard Smithsonian uh, in Cambridge. We have one from the Max Planck Institute. And we have from another uh, department of astrophysics and another Chinese uh, university. So from the list of authors, it seems to be a, a pretty uh, pretty knowledgeable bunch a bunch here. And and I began and I read through the, the article. In this one, they, they kind of tried to... Um, um, to look up uh, the uh, the distance and the motion of uh, of the star, I don't really focus on the age, um, but P 
people have referenced this article sometimes when uh, when mentioning age, or I actually think it was also mentioned on the Wikipedia page. Um, and in this last section here, just at the end of the discussion, before they go into the conclusion, they talk about the current location of the star um, and some of the uncertainties that they have, that it, it, it seems like the star had moved as far from the cloud where it was expected to be created. But they talk about how they would, uh, where it would fit in the, again, they reference the HR diagram, which we just looked at before. And they say that it's consistent. Um, they say here, blah, the location of VY CMA, so that's uh, the one we're looking at, exact star, on the HR diagram is consistent with a age 2.8 million years based on an evolution track of a 27 uh, solar mass star. So again, we can see they, they do uh, have a fairly high estimate on the mass of the star. Um, most other places I see them reference this, they, they do reference this lower, but I guess it's just kind of in the ballpark, but they say, yeah, it should then be only around um, 8.2 million years old. So that pretty much concluded it for me that there was definitely something up. And it seems like what's happened here is that the star was supposed to be 8.5 million years old in the, uh, in the game, but they managed to move a decimal point. So they ended up with 850. Um, but yeah, that was just a, I just wanted to take you down the, the rabbit hole that I spent and uh, spent that afternoon trying to figure out what the hell was uh, was going on with this star. Um, but other than that, it's actually a quite interesting optic. As I, I, doing my whole, like, trying to figure out what's going on research research here, I, I actually just did some quick uh, number crunching on it. And especially the density of this star is, is quite interesting. Now, the sun has an average density. Of course, the density varies a lot. It would be a lot lighter, a lot less dense at the surface, and it would be very dense at the core. But the average density of the sun um, is around uh, one and a half is 1.4 tons per cubic meter, um, where water comes in, of course, at one ton per cubic meter. So the sun is like, density-wise, um, one and a half times uh, pure water. So that means if you could imagine you put the sun inside like in an ocean and it wouldn't just boil it away immediately. Just imagine that it that the sun was very cold and wouldn't just immediately burn everything away. Um, the sun would sink if you put it in water. Now, air has a density of 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. So one cubic meter of air has a mass of 1.2 kilograms. Now, the star here has an average density, average density of 8.3 milligrams per cubic meter. This thing is about a hundred times, a hundred thousand times lighter than air. If you put, if you could imagine the same thing, you could imagine that you could put this inside our atmosphere. If, if our atmosphere was big enough, but if you imagine that we had something that was at a, a surface, uh, of, um, at the, it was at the air pressure at the, at the sea level, this star would would float upwards like a like a like a balloon, like a hot air balloon, basically, um, because it is so light. Uh, well, the, it's not light; it's it's its density is so low um, on average, and that is because where it is in its evolutionary branch. Um, early in its life, this star would probably have been very, very dense. This has been a very very um, very hot, probably O type star. Um, would be my guess, maybe it would only have been B, I'm not sure. Um, I just didn't completely track it down to, to which stellar class it would have been when it was uh, was younger. But but at least it would have been a lot denser, but because it, in the late part of its life, have swollen up and become so big, I will cover all this in, in the next video, next to uh, the Science of Elite. Um, because I, that was actually what I was planning to talk about in this video, but again, I got completely sidetracked doing the, the creation of the video. Quite an interesting, uh, interesting object. I, I hope that you uh, that you learned at least uh, a few things. At least look up those HR diagrams if you ever find a star. Um, I think it's actually quite fun if you're out exploring. Anyway, just go to Google, search HR diagram, and have one on uh, either on an iPad or anywhere. Because then when you find a star, try to plug it in. On the uh, on the diagram with the correct mass and the, the lifetime of the star, you can use luminosities if if I can't remember that's shown in the game, 
but you can probably figure out where it fits on the on the diagram and you can then see if that actually fits with the um, um, with what you have in the in game and you can then actually see either where the star is this lifespan and what's going to happen it's just going to add a little bit extra flavor to um, to exploring that you can sit and you can classify the stars manually which i actually think is quite funny but anyway i really hope that you liked this video if you did give it a like down below subscribe to the channel and until next time i will see you guys in space